KFC's Bigger Value Challenge. 1995 buys you this big KFC family value meal. Or 1995 might buy you this Chinese meal. So much food, so little money. Okay, well, it looks like first thing we have are the uh, the control cables. Several of them here. I see a speaker. Oh boy. So, <laughs> how would you like to use that? I think that would get you a, a cell phone ticket in no time. You tried to use that on the road today. Still attached to a control head. Okay, so we got some cables, speaker, telephone handset mic, and this is, I believe, a. I forget if it's a 600 series, 16 channel control head. So, some loose pieces in there. Another okay. cable. Another cable here. Let's see. <laughs> Another cable, and there's the never seen one of those handsets before but there's the the base for the handset to mount in the speaker control cable and looks like we're getting down to the radios here's the uh, I guess you would call it the accessory connector for the control head and another speaker Radios. Five of them here. So, one here. That's a Ranger 450. There should be four UHFs. And one VHF high band. The mounting plate attached. Another 450. There's a another 450. A little more beat up. There's the Ranger 150, the high band.
here's a another 450. This one's labeled backup. A couple of control heads, some 550s here. Let's see. Okay, so this is an interesting one. I haven't seen it before. This has the scan, which we're familiar with, but it also has a mode switch A and B. So you can support up to 32 channel capability. You have to add the second EEPROM to the radio. It'll be interesting to see if the radio has, well, if they have all their parts, if they have the EEPROMs and so on. So we got a 550 head. And another 550 head with just a scan option. like the mic jack is loose but otherwise it's all there and a couple of mics at the bottom <coughs> Last one. okay oh I see one more head one more 550 head Three. and it's another Five fifty head with scan and the bracket. Looks good. Hmm. This one looks like it had some kind of <laughs> thrown together bracket that somebody threw together. And now let's go through the rest of the newspaper. Close with the rest of this and then I'll get on the bench here and we'll start powering radios up and see what happens. Alright, so I took the cover off the 150. It looks like it's got a 16 channel setup here. Everything looks pretty normal. Okay, so to get these radios open, you need a T25 Torx fastener. Uh, this is the bottom of the VHF radio, so what I've done to speed things up today is put a T25 bit on my electric drill, battery drill, and makes it a lot easier. I have five radios to do. Here's a look at the bottom of the 150 megahertz radio. This does look like the high power PA. It's got a pair of 2 SC 782 transistors. Hmm. Looks pretty good. So I get this one put back together. All right, here's the Ranger 450 labeled backup. Another one set up for 16 channels. Looks like everything is here. I'll take the bottom cover off. Okay, here's the bottom off the first one. Uh, this looks to be the 35 watt PA, which these UHF radios are supposed to be 35. Yeah, physical inspection looks good.
Okay, next one is a Ranger 450, labeled ST1942. And we got another 16 channel UHF. Okay, here's the underside of the radio. Everything looks good here too. Um, it's another 35 watt PA. Construction of this PA looks a little different than the other one. I don't recall seeing these large solder pads here, but uh, yeah, everything in here is spotless. I don't see any sign of any problems. Okay, next up is a Ranger 450, labeled PK675. 16 channel. This is interesting. I don't recall seeing that before. That jack, I'm not sure what that does, but that's a new one on me. Everything looks good in here. Okay. Here's the underside of this radio. Looks good. Spotless, no water damage. I'm always impressed with how clean these radios are inside when they come out of service. I mean, yeah, you know, it's picked up some dust here and stuff, but man, these things are just spotless inside and extremely well constructed. Okay, next up I got a Ranger 450. Some scratches and marks, but no serial numbers or anything. It's another 16 channel radio. Looks like everything's here on the uh, synthesizer VCO side. And there's the underside of the last radio. Looks good. Don't see any signs of trouble. Everything looks nice and clean. One thing you have to watch for on these is this crystal here is socketed it's for the uh, receiver IF. It's a local oscillator crystal for the uh, second stage IF. And, uh, that's socketed. It can come out and it can stick to the cover here, especially to this uh, foam rubber and you can pull it right out of the socket. So you have to kind of watch for that when you take the cover off on these just to something good to remember. Okay what we're gonna do now is test each radio here with my little bench set up on channel one. Got the radio hooked up, powered up, connected to a dummy load watt meter over here. Uh, first thing I like to do is check for receiver audio. We got squelch audio transmit I've got well this meter is a little off it's probably 35 watts on well 458 576 hello test one two three so we have our transmit transmit audio my scanner over here old scanners receiving the uh, the audio and now I'm gonna put in a uh, Signal from the signal generator. Amplitude, however much it takes to hear something. Okay, here's a check on the receive. Since it's uh, set up for repeater, I'm transmitting 5 megs below the uh, transmit frequency. My SIG gen is a little bit flaky, it comes unlocked, but Right now you can hear it. I don't have it connected directly. Is this radiating through an antenna? Because I don't want to risk uh, burning up the SIGGEN if it goes into transmit. It's uh, 
basic test. Receive sounds good on this one. Here's the next one labeled PK675. It's another UHF. I'm good there. And uh, here's transmit audio. Looks to be set up to transmit on the same frequency. So similar power levels. Similar indications here. Let's see about the receive. That's what I'm doing. Just taking the connector off. Once again, that crackle is my SIG gen. That looks like it's receiving similar to the other one, although we'd have to hook it up directly to get a good measurement. I'm going to move on to the next radio. Okay, here's ST1942. Transmit test. Test one, two, three. And similar power output. Hmm. Frequency on this one's a bit off. Say it's at least, I don't know, a KC off from the others might be worth adjusting the reference oscillator and we'll check the receive. Yeah, sounds good. My SIG Gen going crazy. Okay, and here's the one, another Ranger 450 labeled backup. Transmit, same configuration. Channel 1. Frequency and power looking good. Then I unscrew the antenna for the receive to expose the center conductor. And sounding good. Okay, here's the Ranger 150, the high band, high power radio, channel 1, open squelch, transmit, oh yeah, I'm going to switch to the 100 watt scale, now I don't have the proper cable, but you can see 90 watts, you can see on my amp meter here, this is drawing over 20 amps. And I'm not using a heavy enough cable. The whole cable's heating up, but this is just my bench test cable. It's what I got. These are too big to, to fit onto those. I don't have the spades to fit those onto the terminal. So I'm going to find out what frequency we're on here. I'm going to set it to VHF. Now yeah, I'm going to have to get a better antenna on this. Figure out what frequency it is. Okay, well, it's 155, 400. Transmit. I don't know about receive, but let's see. Okay, here's the transmit into the dummy load. 90 watts. I did see. Yeah, I see a brief unlock on the transmit. Not sure what's going on there. Might just be these power cables too thin. Yeah, that thing's getting really hot. Okay, frequency 155, 400 megahertz. And there it is. So it's set up for simplex.